Welcome, guys. <clears throat> We're back with the So What Show. <clears throat> We're coming back out of What Did He Reveal? The title and deeds of the universe by Rashid L. Muhammad. Okay. Let's get started. We're on page 61. Appendix 1. God is a human being. A well-educated fifth grader, fifth grade student, knows Jesus of 2,000 years ago spoke Aramaic, belonging to the Semitic subfamily of the Afro-Asiatic language family. Aramaic rather, was the language of Jesus. <clears throat> Therefore, when Jesus in Matthew 24, 26, uses the Aramaic word bar e nash meaning son of man in English. He was telling his disciples that the God to come will be a man, the son of a man and not a spook or spirit. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there, do not believe it for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out, or look, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the caucus is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Matthew 24, 23 through 28. Furthermore, the Son of Man, also referred to as God or Christ, will be coming to the East, Arabia, to the West, America, whose national emblem is represented as an eagle. Let's look at this world map. Page 62. Okay. The bald eagle has been the national bird of the United States since 1782, when it was placed with outspread wings on the great seal of our country. Basically, they got that from Egypt. It appears in many government institutions and on official documents, making it the most pictured bird in all of America. The eagle appears on the president's flag, the mate, the mace of the House of Representatives, military insignia, and billions of one-dollar bills. Lastly, the meaning of the carcass in Matthew 24, 28, represent the inactivity or a people lagging behind due to being worn out retard or decayed. The meaning is in accordance to the language spoken by Jesus 2,000 years ago. See note below. In Aramaic, the root pay, gamel, rish, that's P-E-Y dash G-I-M-M-E-L dash R-E-I-S-H refers to inactivity or at least lagging behind. A holiday is known in Aramaic as a Yoma de Pargra, day of inactivity. A modern Hebrew cognate in Fargar means retard. From an etymological perspective, novella is related to the root 
Bela, which means worn out or decay, which is the state of any carcass left to the elements. What comes out the carcass? Maggots. What color are maggots? White. Appendix two. I am the divine supreme being. An early registered Muslim sister, Bernstein Sharif wrote about what Master Farah Muhammad did and said while standing before a court judge after being arrested for teaching Islam to black people of America. In fact, Sister Bernstein was the secretary treasurer and personal secretary to Master Farad Muhammad. She typed all literature, letters, lessons, problem book, actual facts, and so on. Of the nine laborers chosen by Master Farad Muhammad, he was the only female laborer, or should I say she, that's a typo, okay? The bullet points only, she narrates the following observation. Old Satan got shaky when at last they found this man in jail was God <clears throat> they had bound. They brought him before justice and when he they had seen asked his authority asked what did he mean? He opened the Holy Quran so it could be seen then boldly declare, I am the divine supreme being. I know in one story, they was telling him, be careful with Master Fry Muhammad because he is capable of the, <clears throat> the um, what's the word? Can't get the word right now, but um, unlimited um, power as far as in destroying something. That's me putting it in. Without that word, I can't get it right now. But let's keep going. For the for the record, the highest explosive. He's capable of the highest explosives. That's what it is. For the record, it was not a coincidence that Master Farad Muhammad was born February 25th, 1877. During the same year, Zionist bankers, the U.S. Supreme Court, White Christian Democrats and Republicans signed a deal to return black people back to damn near slavery under Jim Crow, laws which disarmed blacks. The secret deal was formulated only days before the end of the Grant administration under threat of filibuster and violence on Monday evening, February 26. 1877 seemed like every time Satan goes to plotting on something God has some right at that same time the warmly agreement 1877 compromise paved the way for the end of the reconstruction era of newly free slaves and a withdrawal of remaining federal troops southern states protecting blacks from untold terrorism, murder, rape, and evil by white men, men rather, lies by white women and white children. Rape and evil, look at that, untold terrorism, murder, rape and evil by the, the white men and lies by the white women and white children. Appendix 3, Public Ministry of Jesus. And you know the mother is the first teacher. So I'm not surprised they put the mother and the child with the lies together. Public Ministry of Jesus. What is being presented below is a Christian version of events written in symbolic language regarding what we should expect upon the production of God in person and two other men under name of Jesus. Due to the limitation of time, 
I will not go into placing the time and events from its past tense, present tense, to future perfect tense. But I will say no matter how confused people have become due to the manner in which Christian Gentile devils and Jews misrepresented our forefathers, forefathers' prophecy thousands of years ago, the reality is that portions of Jesus' history interchanges with the history of Prophet Muhammad of Arabia, which interchanges with what has taken place in North America with respect to the public ministry of these three men. An example, Master Farah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and Minister Louis Farrakhan. For now, all I can suggest is that you learn the true history of Jesus 2000 and a detailed history of the nation of Islam in North America and Prophet Muhammad after the Hajra. Then you shall unravel the riddle. Didn't um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on July 14th said the unraveling of America? Well, this one is on. Then you shall unravel the riddle of the three-year public ministry as follows. The first year of Jesus' ministry. The event in chiefs in chiefs the event in Christ's life and ministry one baptism of Jesus two Jesus temptations in the wilderness America is a wilderness it used to be nothing but fours here three Jesus begins gathering his first disciples four Jesus' brief visit to Galilee, where he performed his first miracle in Cana and stopped in Capernaum. Five, Jesus' early Judean ministry, which included his first cleansing of the temple and his talk with Nicodemus. I'm seeing some things here I ain't even seeing, but it's interesting. I'm seeing that what, what popped in my head was um, um, Master Farah Muhammad talking with um, Eisen, um, what's his name, Einstein. And then the miracles, I'm seeing the miracles as far as um, the resurrection of the nation of Islam and what they had to do to get us to where we are today, even the Million Man March, the going overseas. Wow. But anyway, you like I, like it says, you have to study for yourself. Six, Jesus, and then the one where it says the, the gathering his first disciples. That's uh, I, with Master Farah Muhammad. I see that with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the ones that was the the help of Honorable Elijah Muhammad when Master Farah Muhammad left, and then Honorable Elijah Muhammad gathering the first disciples for when he left for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So, what do you think? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is leaving <clears throat> for us. Six, Jesus returned to Galilee. En route, he speaks with the woman of Samaria at the wheel. At the wheel. At the well. He returns to Cana where he performed his second miracle. Hmm. So that should tell y'all as uh, far as ministers and preachers and uh, people of guidance you should be preparing um, the ones that's closest to you your 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 mercuries your messengers the ones that's the closest to you and circling around you the fastest preparing them for future tense when you have departed to go wherever you're going even if you don't go nowhere <clears throat> Seven, Jesus returned to Judea to attend an unnamed feast in Jerusalem where he heals the man at the pool of Bethesda, 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 B-E-T-H-E-S-D-A, on the Sabbath that provokes the anger 
of the Jewish leaders. I'm sorry, I don't be communicating with a lot of different people. I'm pretty much, I be, I'm self-teaching myself and with my studies, I don't be around a lot of uh, high intelligent people talking about these things. They be on some other subjects, so I'm sorry. Forgive me, I'm not perfect. The second year of Jesus' ministry, the event in Christ's life and ministry. Where we at? One, Jesus begins his great Galilean ministry of preaching repentance and that the kingdom of God is at hand. Two, Jesus' rejection in his hometown of Nazareth of Galilee and makes Capernaum in Galilee the headquarters for his great Galilean ministry. Three, I mean, you following Jesus, you're supposed to know this stuff already. You're supposed to be following Jesus. <clears throat> Three, Jesus calls his disciples to begin following him full time. Mm -hmm. Not working for nobody else, working for him full time. Uh, Patch, uh, T.D. Jakes, and the rest of y'all. <laughs> Four, Jesus chooses but 12 of his disciples to be his disciples. Out of all of them, he only, I just need 12. Five, what's the significance of 12? Jesus' sermon on the mount. Well, when you look back as uh, far as in the, in the universe, we got, we got nine planets in the sun, which is, makes it really ten. But we used to have two more. They collided into each other. So that really, it was 12. <clears throat> but let's keep going. Then we got the 12 major scientists, 12 minor scientists. But let's keep going. Five, Jesus' sermon on the mount. Six, Jesus sends out his 12 apostles on their first ministry mission and instructs them. He sent them out on a mission. Seven, the story of John the Baptist's murder by Herod, which occurred sometime early, earlier in Jesus' second year of ministry. Hmm. The third year of Jesus' ministry. The event in Christ's life and ministry. I'm just noticing that one, two, three, two, okay? The event in Christ's life and ministry. One, the four periods of Jesus' re retirements with his 12 disciples begins the third year of his ministry. Two, Jesus feeds the 5,000. How many of y'all have been able to feed 5,000 saying that you follow Jesus? I had, I could say that in, in um, some ways I've, I've fed over 5,000. <laughs> got to follow Jesus. You can do bigger and greater things. But let's keep going. Three, Jesus refused to have the crowds make him their bread king and preaches he is the bread of life. Many disciples then turn away from him. Four. Jesus transfiguration. Five, Jesus closes his Galilean ministry. He closes it and conducts his later Judean and Perean ministry while en route to Jerusalem to be crucified. Closes one ministry and open up two more en route to be crucified. Ain't that so? Six, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And the Jewish religious leaders plot Jesus' murder to save their own positions. So now Jesus raises Lazarus. You know who Lazarus is here in America. That's the black people of America at the bottom. So Jesus raises the black people up in today's time. And the Jewish religious 
leaders plot Jesus' murder to save their own positions. So what? By him raising up Lazarus, it was going to knock them out of their positions. So they plot on Jesus. Look at that. Jesus exposed them. They weren't going to be able to hold them positions. You weren't worthy of them positions. You weren't even supposed to be in that position. How the hell you even get the damn job? Seven. Jesus' final journey to Jerusalem and his entrance into the city on Palm Sunday, which began Holy Week. Eight. Holy Week of Jesus' passion and resurrection. Nine. Jesus' last appearance to his disciples and his ascension into heaven. Interesting that we're talking about this on Kobe's day. Appendix 4. In the Indo-European languages, the term personal or person actually mean, in a theological sense, absolute perfection. And I give you the reference for that. I have a reference for it which is precisely what the Quran really teaches. As one Western writer indicated, Encyclopedia of Islam, but in the Arabic language, the equivalent of persons is known as sh shocks. In the Arabic language, the term has not undergone the transformation which it did in Indo-European languages. So when you ask a Muslim, you say, is Allah shocks? He'll say no, because shocks in Arabic has only one meaning. A person, a human being, physical, limited being. This statement is rather incriminating since Badawi forgot to mention, or he may have never read the hadiths, which clearly describe Allah as a shocks. Saad so bin Yubada said, if I saw a man with my wife, I would have struck her by the sword with no forgiveness. When this reached the prophet of Allah, he, the prophet, said, hmm? he said, what? Are you amazed at Saad's jealousy? By Allah, I am more jealous than Saad, and Allah is more jealous than I. Because of Allah's jealousy, he, Allah, forbade immorality, whether it is done in the open or in secret. And there is no person, shocks, who is more jealous than Allah. And nothing is more loved by him by Allah than to ask for forgiveness. For this reason, he sent the prophets to share the good news and to warn. He sent them on a mission to give good news and to warn. And there is no person shocks who likes a praise more than Allah. And for this reason, he Allah promised heaven a good condition. Must not a mod number 17703. The statements of Muhammad and his followers that there is no shocks or person that is more jealous over honoring women folk than Allah presupposes that the Muslim deity is a shocks himself. Otherwise, it would make absolutely no sense to say that Allah is more jealous or has more honor than any other shocks if he weren't one. Lastly, the last prophet of Islam, Muhammad Abin Abdullah, understood that one day Allah would make himself manifest clearly in human form during what is called the day 
of resurrection. We said, O oh, Allah's messenger, shall we see our Lord on the day of resurrection? He said, do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun and the moon when the sky is clear? Hmm? We said, no. He said, so you will have no difficulty in seeing your Lord on a day as you have no difficulty in seeing the sun and the moon in a clear sky. Well, Grandmaster said they out here spraying, spraying the air so you can't see the sun clearly. Interesting. They don't want you to see. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. They don't want you to see your Lord clearly. So they're putting up these fog. But you know, he, 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 he leaves in a fog too. In the midst of the fog. Mm, mm, mm. That's interesting. We're going to do one more. Appendix 5. Detroit longitude 44.3148. North latitude 85.6024 West. Some people want to know why Master Farah Muhammad went to Detroit, Michigan to find his father's lost brother, Elijah Pole. What did he know about the year in which he would meet Elijah in the northwest corner of the United States? Northwest corner of the United States. How did he know? What geometric formula did he apply? Simply put, by calculating the longitude and latitude of the earth, you arrive to the year Master Farah Muhammad met Elijah Muhammad and began revealing what he revealed to him face to face for 3.5 years. 85.6024 latitude, 44.3148 longitude. <laughs> okay, so the West. Okay, I was I was studying the graphs and stuff that he um, made notes on yesterday. So I see something else on that. Equals 1931. Okay, okay. So I can I got me some more calculations to do a little later. Latitude is based on 1884 Greenwich location. Okay. Should we do another one? Let's see. No, we're gonna say this one because I, I did some I've been doing some study on it, which this is it coming up now, so I can understand this better. And now that I understand it better, coming out of the Supreme Wisdom, I will share it with you on the next episode so you can see it clearly as well. So we're gonna be stopping here on page 73. Okay, family, until next time, keep your heads up, stay focused, and read.